Throughout this season, we've been from ancient Rome to World War I to American Prohibition. We've talked about a lot of backfires that you can only read about in the history books. But today, we are looking at one backfire that every single one of us has witnessed. The fall of Blockbuster. Find out what decisions Blockbuster and other failed businesses have made that led to their demise. I am Jake Snarky of Snorley. Welcome to Laughs from the Past. Oh, you butchered your name at the end. You so, so made it so far. You butchered your own name. Did I get that wrong? Yeah, got it a little wrong. Oops. Must be that dumb brain of yours. Must be a Polish. Pol- you are Polish. Yes. Yes. Pogazelski. Welcome to Last from the Past, everybody. We missed last week. We apologize about it, especially I didn't really communicate it well. And we haven't communicated this as well, but we have some news to dump on you right now. This will be the final episode of Season 5 of Laughs from the Past Historical Backfires, and we will be taking a brief hiatus as baseball season winds down. If some of you do not know, Jake and myself, Jimmy, do a lot during the baseball season, and the playoffs will be a hectic time for us. And the new season, season six, will begin come November. It's not going away. Just a brief hiatus. A gap, like how real life shows work. Yeah. 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 We don't know what season six is going to be yet. Um, We've had a lot of people join the show and start listening in the last couple weeks. So it's like not a great time in in that aspect. But stay with us. Stay subscribed. If you're not subscribed, subscribe, come back, and uh, be ready for some fun this winter. Also, a disclaimer before we get going, if you'd like to help out with research and uh, writing episodes, send an email to luke at johnboymedia.com. Only if you like actually want to help out, because Luke is our producer now. Um, he graduated from intern Luke to producer of laughs from the past Luke. He basically set up this entire season and he's going to need some help. So if you want to get involved and help out, uh, with laughs from the past email, Luke at johnboymedia.com to do so. All right, let's talk about blockbuster, Jake, your favorite store. Not currently. Um, can I take a guess and I don't want this to offend you or delight you. I don't, I, I hold no meaning usually ends guess. up offend usually I ends up at offending I, I don't I, it's a guess i don't see your childhood as being a big blockbuster kid so not my childhood um but the middle years absolutely we were every friday night oh i consider childhood all the way through high school so no Oh, yeah. I mean, childhood, end, end of middle school, early high school, every Friday night. It started yeah. at Blockbuster. Oh, yeah? Getting movies yeah. or hanging out? Uh, we'd hang out. We'd, we'd Basically, you'd come in knowing that you were going to get one of two movies. You'd dance around the store and make bad jokes about the bad movies or movies you've already seen for about half hour, 45 minutes. Then you pick one of the two movies you knew you were going to get, and you go back somewhere and watch it. I get, and I think a lot of people our age do, I get like real nostalgia thinking about Blockbuster, and I don't know why, but if I just like close my eyes and walk through those aisles with all the, DV- the, the movies and DVDs come later on, it's like, damn, like, like part of me wants to be like, take me back, but I don't really want to go back, but for some, no. it's just a memory. But yeah, I mean, the the weirdest employees, you were always a bit weirded by the employees like, oh, my God, I wouldn't want to actually hang out with you. 
Uh, and then I loved the sections. Like, you just go in genre. I wanted to watch every movie. So I was a big blockbuster guy. We would go and get one movie we liked, and then we'd go and we'd walk with my, our eyes closed. That's something I did with my friends. And one person, eyes closed, 10 steps, or they, you know, start walking, stop right. And then you got to grab the movie and you get it. And like, maybe you like it, maybe it's awful, but that's you know, one that you know you want to watch and one ra- grab bag and just see where you land. Rules are rules. We, uh, we would do that, except it would normally be like a good movie and then like ridiculously bad, quote unquote, scary movie. Um, and we we went through a big phase of those as well, but yeah, I mean, you that was that was kickoff. That was Friday night start of the game. Yeah, man, it's it's weird. And there's some other companies and or businesses, I should say, that failed that we're going to talk about. And if it was a backfire or, or what happened, it, it is weird. And as you grow up, obviously, you see this to have like such a a, a tyrant or not a tyrant, like such a industry leader. And now it's just gone. Yeah. Industry does not exist. It's crazy. And it's kind of scary. <laughs> like Just wash yeah. up like that. That's it's it. It's nuts. All right. Adapt so let's, or die. Let's go to some articles here uh, that talk about what happened with Blockbuster. Okay. So here we go. Epic fail. This is from Variety. How Blockbuster could have owned Netflix. It will go down as one of the biggest missed opportunities in the boardroom. Blockbuster's deciding not to buy Netflix. But that's what could have happened multiple times throughout the early 2000s when Netflix CEO and co-founder Reed Hastings, sounds like a football name, Reed Hastings, courted a deal with Blockbuster chief John Antioco, I hope I'm saying that right, to purchase the then DVD by mail rental company for $50 million of the company uh, for $50 million. So he wanted Blockbuster to buy Netflix for $50 million. And then Blockbuster would promote Netflix in the stores, the brick and mortar stores. And Netflix, and when Netflix would... Something, I forget, with something with Blockbuster. I mean, they'd be affiliated with Blockbuster. I mean, at the time, Blockbuster was still Blockbuster. Yeah. Netflix was nothing. The idea was that Netflix would run Blockbuster's brand online and Antioch's firm would promote Netflix in its stores. So it just, you know, what what became the online rental would have been called Blockbuster. They just You know, it. up until last year, people would still get the DVDs mailed to them. That stopped? I think it, it last year, I think was the last year they did it. So I uh I was reading this article, skimming through it, and I was like, that's even nostalgic for me now. Right? Like that there's a lot of people that don't even know that that's what Netflix was at first. Yeah. And this article why would you? Your like your brother Luke wouldn't know that. No, I don't think so, unless he was at the tail end of me doing that, because I went through a weird phase of that. Right. Um what was Netflix's rival? There was another popular mail you dvds amazon prime was it i mean that must have been later on like 2009 i think yeah i I mean that's still so netflix was still going by then so uh yeah um so it says we all know what happened next blockbuster went bankrupt in 2010 and netflix is now worth 28 billion (laughs) dollars About 10 times what Blockbuster was worth at its peak. Today, Hastings is widely hailed as a genius and Antioco is considered a fool. Yet that is far too facile an explanation. Antioco, the Blockbuster guy, was in fact a very competent executive. Many considered him a retail genius with long history of success. Yet for all his operational acumen, he failed to see that networks of unseen connections would bring about his downfall. Over the past 15 years, scientists scientists what have learned about how much these networks function and how its fate could have been avoided. So here are some reasons what the problems with Blockbuster at the time 
were. Um, Blockbuster spent a lot of money, and its main model was late fees. Like that was its one of its main pillars of right. revenue. They would charge you late fees if you didn't return your tape on time. Well, I mean, and how how much back in the day? How how much was a tape to buy retail? Like twenty bucks? I would guess. And I mean, to rent out a tape, it had to be what two, three, four bucks. <laughs> if you had like, if you had like a a membership, I think it was a little cheaper or whatever. Oh, membership, yeah, right. Um, so I mean, they, I mean, they were membership, and it's, I mean, it's, it's any rental store model, right? I mean, if they rented out any movie, like. Six times, I'll throw it as a round number. I mean, they basically made it back, but with memberships, late fees, and I mean, yeah, that was the business. So this, I just Googled it, like when did VHSs become um, affordable to the mainstream? And in the late 80s, it would cost like 25 bucks for a VHS. Okay. Blockbuster, the first day of rental would cost two ninety nine for new releases and one ninety nine for older films. All movies will cost ninety nine cents for additional days. Redbox charges ninety nine cents for rentals every day. Was Blockbuster pre drinking? For you and I. Right, but that's what I'm saying. Like those, those don't overlap at all, right? Did Blockbuster end for us when drinking began? <laughs> no, I used Blockbuster late into high school, early college, like 2008, 2009. And what I would do is I would go rent seasons on DVD. Like I and rented, burn them. I rented The Sopranos the entire season, or I rented like all six. And instead of watching them in the three days, I'd just burn every DVD. Right. And then return them. That's why you had... I, I remember that. You had your extensive DVD collection. But I'm saying, like, when we're talking nostalgic, fun, blockbuster, let's pick a random movie, go hang out and watch it, that was, like, pre-boozing, right? For us, yeah. Uh, there was, a, there was like, a, the tail end. We we did, like, the, the Office series on DVD. And, and it was, like, senior year, junior year of high school for me. And we, we would rent them, and we played, like, the Office drinking game. Okay. Because that was like the internet like was just starting to offer those things. I was like, right. there's this office drinking game online. We should try it. <laughs> Every time Kevin says something dumb, have a drink. This is crazy. This is nuts. Who made up these time, rules? I don't know. I found it on Jim, the internet. Every time Jim flirts with Pan, chug your beer for three seconds. <laughs> Every time Dwight says, Michael, finish your drink. Damn. That's honestly, that's what it was. So Blockbuster would cost... Five bucks for a three-day rental. I think that's what we always did, my family. Because, like, you're not going to get us. Yeah. So Blockbuster made all their money on late fees. That was their revenue model. And the way this article sums it up and says, the company's, company's profits were highly dependent on penalizing its patrons. In hindsight, that's a tough look. It's a weird business model in hindsight, right? Yeah. Yeah. At the same time, Netflix had certain advantages. By uh, not having retail locations, it lowered costs and could afford to offer its customers a far greater variety. Uh, instead of charging to rent videos, it offered subscriptions, which made annoying late fees unnecessary. Customers could watch a video for as long as they wanted or return it and get a new one. Blew my mind when that first came out. And when I was younger, I was very hesitant to do new things. I'm not anymore like, I'll try something new now. But I was like hesitant to get the iPhone, hesitant to get a smartphone, sure. hesitant to stop using Blockbuster and use Netflix, you know? Um, but, but that idea didn't jive with my brain then. I was like, I want to go to the store, get a movie, and watch it right away. Right. And people, I remember people saying like, no, dude, you make a queue, and you just make a queue of 20 movies, and you watch one, you send it, and they send you the next one. I'm like, that doesn't jive with, like, fulfilling my mood at the time. See, I think, and this is where you and I would pick up a little more on, on the Jake brain and you assuming I wouldn't be a blockbuster guy, is that, like, I didn't mail Netflix DVDs because I would have never mailed them back. Like, I was out until Netflix became, like, online. Yeah. Well, I, like, never... I, was, I was never doing that interaction. Are you kidding me? <laughs> 
Well, I <laughs> what I did, I was such a fucking weirdo. Well, how I use Netflix is I took every single credit card I could find of my family's and did the 30 day trial and promised right. to cancel it before they tried. And in that 30 days, I'd get three DVDs. They'd arrive in the mail. I'd burn them, send them back, get three, three days later when the next set. And I would just, I fucking, you remember my DVD collection. It was like yeah. 600 DVDs. It was gnarly. It was like, that was, it was like a blockbuster. At the time, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of a way, because it's a compliment, but it, like looking back, it's not a compliment. But in college, that's like, that's like part of your package. <laughs> Jimmy's got movies. Like that's part of your deal. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. uh, dude, I met this kid down the hall. <laughs> He's got like six thousand movies. <laughs> like uh, that's a part of your identity. Jared from Subway did that, but he was doing porn and VHSs. Oh, yeah. I was. I just good movies. I had two binders. One was comedy. One was drama, and they were alphabetized. And I had like five hundred DVDs. Yeah, I just get them from Netflix, burn them, and then send them back, and then get more. And I wouldn't even watch them right away. How they come arrest you? Well, dude, the saddest thing was I put so much time into that. Yeah. Then in like 2011 or 12, whenever I would just stream movies, and I didn't even really like own a DVD player anymore. I just threw them all out. I literally just took those binders and just tossed them in the garbage. It's tough. It's crazy. But we have you on tape, so. You're arrested. Uh, while Netflix's model clearly had some compelling aspects, it also had some obvious disadvantages. Without retail loca- locations, it was hard for people to find it. Moreover, because its customers received their videos by mail, the service was somewhat slow and cumbersome. People couldn't just pick up a movie for the night on their way home. It's true. Still, customers loved the service and told their friends. Some were reluctant at first, but they actually liked being able to browse movies at the because st- they liked being able to browse movies at the store, pick one up at a moment's notice. But others jumped right in, and as more of their friends raved about Netflix, the laggards tried it too, fell in love with it, and convinced people they knew to give it a shot. Um. So yeah, over time, you know, it grew. So what happened was, um. This effect, do, 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 where's the next paragraph here? What happened was Netflix, in order to compete, did away with their late fees. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think that. To discontinue the late fees that annoyed customers and invest heavily in a digital platform to ensure the brand's future, and Tioko. Describes what happened next. While he convinced the board to back his plan, one of his lieutenants, Jim Keyes, led a rear guard action. He pointed out that the cost of Antigua's changes, about $200 million to drop late fees and another $200 million to launch Blockbuster Online were damaged. Dude, he wanted it. It would cost $200 million to drop late fees? For Netflix? No, for Blockbuster. So and and Tioko, the blockbuster dude, saw how good Netflix was doing, and then like he said no to them. He realized that they're a threat, and Redbox is a threat. So as a CEO, he wanted to drop late fees and turn Blockbuster Online into a thing, just copy the model. Right. But the board was reluctant because they they would lose two hundred million by dropping late fees. And that's the thing, and that that's where I was. At when you're saying business model before, I mean, there's obviously a lot going on in the business model, but the late fees are pure profit. (laughs) It's, it's, we run a normal business. That's fairly, it's profitable anyways, but with late fees, I mean, that's free money. That's $200 of free money. The only expense is hiring someone to like call a reminder, like track them down. Maybe like not even, yeah, that's crazy. So basically, that's like kind of the end of Blockbuster's tale. Yeah. Isn't there still one that's available? People always like make videos of it. Yeah, we'll there's one. It's like in Portland or some hipster place. Yeah. Barry McCarthy, Netflix former <clears throat> chief financial officer, said in an interview with the unofficial Stanford blog in 2008, I remembered getting on a plane, I think sometime in 2000, 
with Reed Hastings and Mark Randolph and flying to Dallas, Texas and meeting with John Antioco. Reed had the chutzpah to propose to them that we run their brand online and they run our brand in stores and they just about laughed us out of their office, at least initially. They thought we were a very small niche business. Gradually, over time, as we grew our market, his thinking evolved, but initially they ignored us and that was much to our advantage. So, Jay, I have a question. There's some other businesses we have here on our list that we can talk about that kind of have similar situations. Because do you think if you're Blockbuster, you're king of the video world, and some company that's doing small potatoes says, hey, why don't you buy us out for $50 million and we'll run you know, your store online? Right. Like, well, we don't need. Why would we pay you fifty million dollars to do something we don't need? Do you? Is it a backfire, or do you understand or kind of sympathize with not having the foresight? Like, does everyone have to have the foresight? So the backfire. I mean, it is a backfire because you had an opportunity, you laughed at them and didn't think they were relevant and. And they destroyed you. <laughs> so it, it was a backfire. I mean, you can't kill the guy because I Blockbuster was basically it was a monopoly. And I mean, they they had the corner market. They did their own thing. They didn't have a rival. It wasn't Dunkin' and Starbucks. Like it was Blockbuster. Hollywood um, video? You weren't a big Hollywood video guy? Nobody was. You weren't allowed to have friends that went to Hollywood video. Imagine no. having a friend who is like, I'm um, a Hollywood video guy. What a snob. I think in the Midwest, there's some like, what, family videos? Something like that. But I don't know. I'm I mean, trying to stay away. It, it was Blockbuster. It was Blockbuster. Um, so, I mean, just imagine. And, I, dude, I, I feel like this stuff still happens. I mean, we're doing a podcast right now. They're still, I I bet, Jim, if we, and, you know, a lot of these things are <laughs> going to happen fairly soon, but, like, if we sat down with some TV executives or whatever, some of their eyes would light up and be like, oh, my God, you guys, you guys have podcasts and you kill it on YouTube, that kind of stuff. Like, their eyes would light up and be like, yeah, you, I mean, this kind of stuff is a big part of the future. I'm sure there's other TV executives that would just like snarf and be like, ah, what, what are you? Did I just hear your dog bark in the background? <laughs> and it's just kind of that, that, that rich and fat and on top of the world. And why would we even care? It's true. I, I have a spin. Okay. Why is no one talking about how dumb the Netflix people are? You're going to sell your business for 50 million bucks to be part of blockbuster who didn't even like see the same vision of you what are you dumb needed the money <laughs> they're doing pretty good they're doing all right best no they ever heard yeah the next business we have on here jake and this one cracks me up right sears yeah <clears throat> i never really Sears is kind of before my time. Like, I never fucked around with Sears, you know? I'd go to Sears, single yeah. mom. I'd end up there. I'm cruising. Yeah. I never really did. But as far as I know, I have an article here. But as far as I know, Sears, if you're too young to know what it was, it it's, is. <clears throat> it's old hardware. Like, you know, washers, dryers, couches, big appliances, really. And then they dabbled into household stuff and all that. And they had a Sears catalog. It would like get mailed to you. It's crazy. And then in big warehouses. It was heavy for men at first. They tried to do like the softer side of Sears and do like clothes and back to school shopping. And I think it didn't work out well. As far as I know, they had like 2,500 stores in America. And all they had to do was hire 10 people and say, hey, can you take our catalog, turn it into a PDF, and put it on the internet and allow people to buy from home? And if they did that, they'd be Amazon. Yeah. 
2,500, call them warehouses now, all of the all of the goods inside, they just needed to offer it to the internet, and they'd be Amazon. It's insane. Now you think of Sears? I just think of old jokes about you know old men saying they used to jerk off to the Sears catalog. Yeah, or I mean, young men across from you right now, but <laughs> it's I mean, yeah, I guess it, there is just. Like the retail world, the retail world got blindsided by the internet, and like yeah. like you were saying in your original question, like no, you couldn't anticipate that. Like you could you could anticipate something, but you can't. In, you could have never anticipated where we are at now. No, but I mean, dude, that I feel like, and I don't know the nitty gritty answers. I feel like they had time, man. Like once they were like, oh right. shit, the internet's real. I feel like they should have had ample time to jump on it. Jim, you're forgetting the biggest part. If if they did that, someone high up has to admit they were wrong. Oh wow. And that's that's like one of the bigger problems with companies. Like that's I I've said this on here before, and it's you know, it'll be my probably end up being my only quote unquote real world business experience. Well, we're creating our own real world, but Jim, it it used to be laughable. I used to travel a lot and I'd go to different divisions and I could tell from hour one and I have a noticeably bad brain. What was a well-run division and what was a poorly run division just by being at any branch in their region for an hour. And it's like, it's crazy how leadership and all of that dictates what happens with a company. And that's why we're doing stories like this and Sears, because someone, you know, I'm sure they had ample time to come back on that, but they said, no, no, we're going to do things our way. Yeah. They said it's run like a hedge fund too, which didn't help it. And they bought out, (laughs) it's like top five things Sears did wrong. Number two, it merged with Kmart, which is, come on. You can't merge with Kmart. Exactly. Like it, and that's that's doubling down on your mistake. I'll I'll go to sports there. Like if you make a mistake, don't put your head down and puppy dog it and make another mistake. Move on. Because right there, they said, Oh no, yeah, we're not into that online stuff. We don't think it's gonna be that big. But listen to this. Imagine Sears and Kmart together. And they're like, okay. What? All right. Listen to what his plan was when they bought Kmart. The hedge fund owner saw value in the retailer's real estate and believed that combining two fading giants would make them stronger. Two wrongs don't equal right, it seems like what I would say. At the time, he said he thought he would be able to bring together Sears Craftsman Tools and Kmart's Martha Stewart Everyday Home Goods in stores to make a merchandising mix that could compete with the likes of Target and Walmart. He also thought he would be able to cut costs by selling underperforming stores and then rebuild a smaller, mightier business. Everything about that is about how they're being bad. Yeah. Weird. Weird. All right, let's go to some other just random ones. Blockbuster is so crazy. Two two people that were giants in their industry and are just faded now. Gone. Gone. Five businesses that missed out big time. Let's see this. M&M's lost out to Reese's Pieces when Mars Candy didn't grasp why it should be featured in E.T. Whoa. Damn. I'd never seen E.T., which may upset people. Have you? Good flick, yeah. Reese's Pieces are a part of it? Oh, yeah. It's crazy to me how much like that actually helps a brand. It does. It's giant. I mean, that's its own industry now. Yahoo almost took over Facebook back in 2006, a move that might have changed its corporate fortunes forever. There was even a handshake agreement between Zuckerberg and Yahoo CEO Terry Semel for a $1 billion buyout. 
Then the company tried to back away from that deal, making a counteroffer of $800 million instead. Even though the original billion was back on the table several weeks later, by then the damage was done, and Zuckerberg, with enough time for second thoughts, quashed negotiations. Damn. It seems stupid. In the company's defense, its blundered negotiations were a byproduct of underperforming earnings and a plummeting stock price, and business history is filled with just this sort of short sightedness and bad timing. So just bad timing, but like good for Zuckerberg on there, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jim, I know it, when you hear ridiculous numbers and it's like part of the problem with like crazy rich athletes, like you hear Antonio Brown blew $30 million and you're like, wow, that guy's so dumb. I mean, picture <laughs> A billion dollars and 800 million, like those are just giant numbers that we laugh at in our heads. 200 million dollars were just taken away from you. <laughs> I mean, that's an enormous slap in the face. Um, so, yeah, it kind of worked out for Zuck. Really worked out. You like Facebook? Yahoo used to run the internet, man. Oh, it's kind of. Do you go to Yahoo? I remember when we tried to move our fantasy no. to Yahoo and I was like, this sucks. Yeah. No, I mean, Yahoo, Yahoo early internet, they were elite for like, just it, for like everyone, like news, sports, finance, like they were early. It feels like they haven't updated anything in 15 years. Do I just got to start new? Your brand's tarnished. But I don't know. At the same time, like when you are a brand that big, I'm sure there's so many people that just Yahoo it up. Yeah. Maybe. Sorry to all our Yahoo users who are listening. No, get off that shit. You're better than that. Okay. Invest fair. in yourselves. Get off Yahoo. Cats and beetles. I don't know what this one says. CT scanners, cat scans, are a staple of modern hospital diagnosis. But it took not one but two missed business opportunities to make the technology as commonplace as it is. You're interested in the rest of this? Cat scans? Maybe. It just seems like he patented the idea. I'm not interested. I don't... I can't care less. There's some other good ones. This says that Google could have been bigger. Back in the late 1990s and into the early years of the 21st century, Google was far from a prominent search engine. Among the many competitors in that space were, wow, this is going to bring back memories, Alta Vista, InfoSeek, Snap, never remember Snap, Magellan, Hotbot, ooh, Hotbot rings a weird bell in my brain, Ask Jeeves, of course I remember Ask Jeeves, Webcrawler, Excite, and of course Yahoo. I don't remember a lot of those, do you? Um, the, the ones at the end, excite Yahoo, ask Jeeves, um, a couple of the early ones rang, rang the bell a little, what was the first one you said? That like took me back. Alta Vista. Alta Vista. Yeah. That feels like, that felt like a middle school class. Oh yes. That was in school. Yeah. It felt, uh, I mean, that's where I jumped back to. I was in fifth grade and someone was like, click Alta Vista. And I was like, no way. I'm holy shit. Yeah. That's, that's, that's where I know that from. Wow. Over time, Google rose to the top for a very simple reason. Its underlying process was faster, more efficient, more targeted, and more accurate. Google wasn't the first, but it may well, Google wasn't the first, but it may very well have been the best. Given its focus on mining, interpreting, and selling data, one might imagine that Google would have been a position to nudge its way into the social networking space of Facebook and MySpace. It tried and failed. Google Buzz was a disastrous attempt that ran afoul of Gmail users who found themselves opted in without their say and exposed to privacy-related blunders. I don't remember that. I remember Google Plus, and people thought that was going to be huge. Um, but it's still like... I had a girlfriend at the time. I was like, Google Plus is going to be huge. Get on it. And I was like, what? No, it's not. No one cares. Nobody cares. Um, other one is uh, Tumblr was bought for a billion and just sold for a couple million. 
Oh, wow. I think they took all the porn off it. I never, I never understood Tumblr. Oh, I have no idea what it is or, or what it did. It was just, I, it felt like for people that just looked at pictures, gifts. Dude, you know what I don't get? TikTok. Is it just Vine? I have no idea. I'll be honest. I think you should be on TikTok. I think it's like made for your music movie Monday dance videos. I can't be contained in that tight of a time frame, you know? Is it only six seconds? I don't think so, but I think it's like a short. I, I have no idea. No idea. Yeah, so someone bought Tumblr for like a billion bucks. They took all the porn off it, and then it just became worthless. <laughs> How why are you watching porn on Tumblr? Is like gifts? Again, I never tumbled. I tumble for ya. I tumble for ya. Name that movie. Philly McFadden. Ooh, close, but so wrong. So wrong at the end. So wrong. All right, you got anything else? Are you embarrassed for Blockbuster? Do you feel bad for them? I don't feel bad. I mean, honestly, I mean, if if you want to be real, I mean, you don't feel bad for the people up top at Blockbuster because they collected millions for years. I mean, they they were profiting a ton. I mean, you feel bad for the person that, like, I don't know, worked 10 years to try to become a manager at Blockbuster or maybe own their own franchise or something like that. Um, Because, I mean, what did they know? That they knew nothing and they shouldn't know anything. Yeah. Um all those all those like Applebee's and TJFs are gonna go out of business. And I look back on like how they how they went into business and it's really gross, man. I don't know. I think you'll be surprised. I think they're gonna last longer than you think. Cause people just like a comfort level. But like microwave food with a waitress is it gross? Yeah. Like, how did that become acceptable? Where were we at in society where it was like, let's overpay for microwave food and a tip for it? I mean, McDonald's is the biggest industry in the world. There's no there's no waitress and tipping and sitting down and all that. It's right. But the big Jim, the biggest thing that's McDonald's secret is the comfort level. You see those golden arches. You know that McChicken you're getting. You know that McDouble. You know that McFlurry. There's that's the comfort level with McDonald's. And it's kind of the same thing for Applebee's and TGI Fridays, Chili's, places like that. I mean, you, you know, right, if, rank if we went to if we went to Chili's today, what would you and I get? App, app sampler, sampler, couple marks. Yeah, but I, the app sampler would make me like it would be like, this is gross. I'd feel so sure. gross ordering it. I wouldn't get a margarita but it, either. But also like picture. I don't know, picture a group of 10 that are on a business trip somewhere. And, you know, they've they've got a semi-limited budget. You don't want to deal with everyone's BS and everyone's diet. You just say, hey, the 10 of us are going to Applebee's. And it's done. Yeah. I'm out. That's like a once a year, other people are making my decision for me situation. And I just think I think that happens an odd amount. Yeah, it's crazy. Those are gonna be the next. All right, what are, what's the next giant to fall in your opinion? Next giant to fall. What's a good one? What's something that's technology, but it's like not good technology. <laughs> I mean, it's not gonna happen, but I'd like Instagram to fall. Yeah, I mean, at some point, I mean, all of the social media is going to fall or be replaced with a new one. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe Instagram taking away likes is going to, like, really backfire. Could. Um, God, I don't know. I mean, with apps and new technology and stuff, it moves so quick that it's like, I don't know. I'm sure we could think of a bunch of apps that have, like, died out in the iPhone times. Probably. I can't. Yeah. I mean, there's like mm, big apps. 
I don't know. Someone reach out. What big apps have come and gone? Are like banks going to not exist at a certain point? Nope. I'm one of the, the oldest institutions ever. Right. But I mean, you can do all of it like from your phone and stuff. Oh, you mean like brick and mortar? Yes. Oh. Mm, maybe they get lessened, but like I have to go to the bank for this soon. Right. Sucks. But Probably that, stop that's getting what robbed. I'm saying, though. But, Jimmy, that's exactly what I'm saying. The stuff that frustrates you that you have to go down there for, doesn't it seem archaic? <laughs> yeah. Like they, that you can't just do an electric signature or whatever? So I, I guess brick and mortar-wise, I would say, like, I mean, what are we doing with banks, really? Fuck banks. Boom. I like banks. All right, hey, guys. This is the end of season five of Last in the Past. We've done so many episodes. If you haven't listened to the back catalog, there's a lot of weird, fun, bizarre shit that happened. Go listen. I think we have like almost 100 episodes on the back catalog. We'll be coming back in November for season six. We're not positive what it's going to be yet. I have a ton of ideas in my head. It's just all about which ones we'll be able to research and build uh, episodes and find stories on. And uh, we'd like to put in our best effort. We're not going to be able to do that in October. And like I said, if anyone wants to help out, if anyone thinks they have a good idea for a season, good idea for stories, and they want to help with the research and the crafting of the season and all that, email Luke at JohnBoyMedia.com. Let them know why you're emailing. And uh, he's, he's the producer now. And we will be back in November. Thank you very much, Jake. Any last words? Thanks, guys. Um, we we enjoy laughs from the past. It's a it's a good form for me to half learn and make some jokes. It's a good form for Jim to learn. So, yeah, cool. See you later.